So when your client cannot do self-administered exercise using free weights or equipment, this is when you can help them doing strength exercise by using your manual pressure or resistance. So that's why it's called manual resistance exercise. So let's start with some intro. Same five checkpoints or same five components that you have to go through. Client position and your position and your hand placement in proper position, okay? Mostly right above and right below the joint that we talked about. We're sticking to the rule of thumb. Number four, this time, same number four D and number five is D, but this time is direction of their movement and number five is direction of your resistance, okay? If it's elbow flexion MRE, their motion is gonna be elbow flexion. So that's the direction of their movement. And your direction of resistance will be matching them or against their motions. So go ahead, bring your hands towards your shoulder. Good, that's one. So that's how you do manual resistance exercise. Again, client position, your position, hand placement, direction of client's movement, and direction of your resistance. Okay, those are our five checkpoints. Now, another thing that we need to talk about in MRE is that when your client has a paralysis, you need to modify them. So they cannot resist against your manual pressure. So simply lifting their own arm weight can be good enough resistance training for them when they're really weak or partial Paratic limb is here. Then bring your hands towards your shoulder, please. So we call this one active range of motion, but it can be also active mode of MRE in our center protocol. So active mode of MRE, same as AROM exercise. Okay, next one. They don't even have a voluntary control or enough strength to lift their own arm weight up. Then you'll be assisting them throughout the range of motion, simply doing PROM can be documented in our center, recorded as a assistive MRE, assistive motor MRE. Okay, lastly, they have a partial available strength, and but the rest of range, available range, you have to assist them. So partial active and partial passive, we call it AAROM, active assistive range of motion exercise. When you are recording that in our center protocol, we documented as a AAMRE under MRE section. So in this case, most commonly people post-stroke has these conditions. They have a full range of motion available, but they don't have enough strength to lift his own arm up or her arm up, only up to maybe partially like this, actively, and I'm assisting the rest of them. The reason we have a different levels of, or different modes of MRE, is we have a lot of clients or patients with post-stroke conditions, hemiparasis conditions. So let's pretend that Mayumi had a stroke and then she's affected on her right side, but left side is just fine, okay? So normal side on the left and affected side on the right. So this is what you'll be doing. Okay, bring your hands up towards the shoulder, okay? Ready, go. You do regular version of, or resistive version of MRE, okay? And by the time you switch over to the right side, you may end up doing AA MRE. So she may be able to go up by herself and then I need to assist the rest of motions. So we are gonna document this one, left side R mode, resisted mode of MRE. Right side is AA mode of MRE, active assisted mode of MRE. So just to recap, for the documentary purpose or recording purpose, we have a four different levels of MRE. Conventional MRE, of course, is already resistive mode, but we're gonna denote that as a R mode, the resistive mode of MRE, the regular mode of MRE. I'll demonstrate that, regular MRE, okay? And then next mode is they actively lifting their own arm up, down again, and two. So active range of motion exercise in our center protocol recorded as a active MRE, okay, active MRE. 
Last one, uh, next one is you assisting them throughout the range of motion. The passive range of motion is recorded as a assistive mode of MRE, AS mode of MRE. Lastly, they have a partial active and partial assistive. Then you record it as a AAMRE. That's the same as AAROM exercise. Okay, four levels, R mode. A mode, active mode, and assistive mode. Lastly, active assistive mode. The rest of time that I'm demonstrating, I'll be demonstrating only resistive mode of MRE, the conventional mode of MRE. But when you come to physical rehab settings like this, you may need to mix up different modes depending on their hemiparesis conditions or paraplegic conditions. Upper, upper extremity, you may be able to do resistive mode of MRE. Lower extremity, you end up just doing range of motion exercise, either active range of motion, passive range of motion, or active assistive range of motion exercise. Good? Okay, so without further ado, let's go ahead, demonstrate the techniques. Five checkpoints again. Fine position, your position, your hand placements, and the direction of client's movement, and the direction of your resistance. Those are things that you have to check off, okay? So let's start with the finger all the way up to shoulder for approximately stretching, uh, MRE. Finger flexion MRE, we are using movement terminology or motion term. So finger flexion, you demonstrate, explain this is what I want you to do. Finger flexion. And then same stabilizing hand as MFE, manual flexibility exercise. Knuckle bones, that are couple heads. Then you be resisting them like this. Ready, go. One, two, and three, okay? For finger extension. Now, you may wonder why did I flip the hands? Unlike a flexibility exercise, resistance exercise, you wanna place their segments so they can move against the gravity. So without my resistance, she can actually lift her fingers against the gravity, right? Stretching those the opposite directions, right? You wanna place their segments so they can drop their body parts towards the gravity to stretch. Resistance exercise, the opposite. You have to allow them to move against the gravity. So that's why I flip the hands. So palm down, this is what they're gonna be doing. So this is what I want you to do. Demonstrate, explain, and I'll give you resistance. Ready, go. Extend your fingers, one, two, and three. Okay, it's a finger extension. Thumb extension, same thing. From fully flexed thumb position, you're gonna bring your thumb up. You do not need to use the whole hands again. A couple of fingers to embrace and support their base of the thumb and two fingers because you don't really need the whole hands to resist against their thumb extension. And bring it up all the way up. One and two and three. Thumb flexion, of course, from fully extended position, you're gonna fold your thumb towards the middle. Okay, ready? Go. One, two and three, okay? Good. Wrist, let's do wrist extension first from full flexion to full extension. So you, when you are demonstrating, you're also assessing their available range. So when they do exercise, they can complete the full range. And we don't want them to do partial range exercise from fully flexed position all the way to full extension, okay? Ready? Go ahead. One two, and three. So above the wrist and below the wrist. I'm not putting my working hands at, at the tip of his, her fingers, right? So this is incorrect, correct hand placement. Wrist flexion goes like this, from full extension to full flexion. Ready? Up, one, two, and three. We typically do these three sets of 10, or maybe two sets of 10, depending on your time constraint. Moving up to the forearm motions, assess their available range of motion and demonstrate this is what we're gonna do. It's called the pronation. If you remember from manual flexibility, elbow has to be at 90 degree to isolate pronation supination motions. This, you'll be including their shoulder motions as well. So elbow 90 degree tucked in, stabilizing hand above the elbow. Working hand, it can be varied, but again, 
clamping their basal radius. Okay, okay, go ahead, turn your hands in. Ready, go. One, two, and three. Other option for working hand placement is arm wrestling position or pronation. Go ahead. Good. And two and three. Or handshake position is fine. Go ahead. One. But that's giving her a lot of stress in the wrist joint. I can see her joint popping. Okay. So that's why I kind of prefer this basal radius clamp method or pronation supination exercise. Okay, let's do supination this time. So from here to there. Ready? Go. One, two, and three. Same thing, it will be a reverse arm wrestling. One, two, and three. Or reverse handshake turning match. Two, and three. That's a supination, okay? All right, moving on to elbow. Elbow flexion extension I already demonstrated. Bicep curl, go ahead, up, bring it up. One, two, and three. This is a good chance for me to demonstrate what can go wrong. Okay, ready? Go. So in this case, I'm giving her too much resistance. She's not able to complete her full range of motion, right? So you have to adjust your resistance level according to their strength and muscle size. Okay? So you have to be smart enough to allow her to complete the full range. Okay? Elbow extension goes like this, down all the way, good. Two and three. Always encourage them to complete the full range, okay? Shoulder, shoulder flexion, I'm gonna demonstrate again. Bring your arm up towards the ceiling. Okay, that's one. Good, while you're demonstrating, as I said before, you have to assess their available range, the full range. Okay, ready? I'm gonna give you resistance. Go up all the way. One. And two. And three, okay? From fully flexed position, they go full extension. So that's gonna be shoulder extension. Ready? All the way down. One. Two and three okay frontal plane motions we're gonna do a b a deduction so abduction go all the way up and adduction goes all the way back to the side is good enough we don't have to go front of their body okay ready go up one two and three, and then switching directions for a deduction, right? Gonna bring it down to the side. One, two, and three. Okay, next one is horizontal abduction and adduction. As I said in the flexibility chapter, hands on the opposite side would be a great starting position. And then demonstrate elbow out, that would be horizontal extension or horizontal abduction horizontal flexion so we'll be alternating those ready go ahead push out that's one two and three and then if you want to do horizontal a deduction or flexion pull it here and you're going to bring it back to your opposite shoulder two and three okay that's how you do horizontal abduction and a deduction Shoulder external rotation and internal rotation is next thing that we're gonna be doing. So from fully internally rotated position, she'll be rotating it out. Shoulder horizontal plane, especially for internal external rotation, the key is exception here, right? Elbow at 90 degree, nothing, no hands around the shoulder, tucking their upper arm to the side, working hand down here. So she'll be rotating her hands out. Ready? External rotation. One, two, and three. And internal rotation from fully externally rotated position all the way to her belly. Ready? One, two, and three. Okay? Advanced mode can be done for someone like Mayumi, volleyball player. This can be a good exercise for or spiking or hitting. So go ahead. 
One, all the way down, all the way down. Two, and three, external rotation. I go all the way up, okay? One, two, and three. That's how you do upper extremity MRE. Any questions so far?